AC Sweep Analysis. Go to the eLearn site under the module that you are currently viewing and you will find starting design files.zip. After you decompress that, you'll be able to open up the project using File Open, navigating to that folder, and you'll find something called potentiometer sweep.projectpcb. And there is a signal schematic called bandpass filter. Open that up. We're going to be adding an AC voltage source, which is necessary for an AC sweep analysis. Go to the libraries panel, locate the simulation sources library, and then find vsyn sinusoidal voltage source, and then drag that to the schematic right in the spot on the left that uh, requires that voltage source. Double click on the symbol, change the designator to V1, and then we're going to go and modify the model down in the bottom right section by clicking the edit button. And once here, we're going to go to parameters and change the, make sure the AC magnitude is set to one, enable its corresponding component parameter, and AC phase should be zero. And again, enable its checkbox. Click OK to dismiss that. And then uh, in the parameter section, since we don't want to see the stray one or zero value visible, we'll just uncheck the visible checkboxes in the parameter section. Then click OK. So there's our schematic completed with our voltage source. Now we're going to open up the simulation analysis setup and then ensure that you have AC small signal analysis enabled and only that one. And then we're going to look at the parameters in here. Start frequency, that should be 100. Stop frequency is 100K. And uh, just to show you, if you have a linear sweep and have a total of 100 test points defined here, then the total test points at the bottom will be 100. We actually want to sweep with uh, a decade mode. And so if we do that, then uh, and go to another field, you'll see that the total test points have now been updated to 301. Go to General Setup, and we want to make sure that the output signal here is set as the active signal. And under View Sim Setup, we want to show all active signals. Click OK, and then we run the simulation by clicking that first icon in the toolbar. And what we have here is the output signal highlighted, and we are sweeping the frequency from 100 all the way to 100,000. We can see, obviously, the frequency response somewhere over here looks like about 5k now we want to add the phase waveform and click on wave add wave and then choose out and then choose the, um, the from the radio buttons phase in degrees and then the checkbox add to new y-axis make sure that's enabled and then click the create button so now we see the phase has been added over here and if i highlight that we'll see the, uh, the phase curve there. Now our curves are a little pixelated, so we're gonna add a little bit more resolution by increasing the number of test points. So we go back to the analysis setup, go to AC small signal analysis, and change test points to 1,000. Now our total test points is 3,000. Um, and then go also to the general setup and then change the SimView setup to keep last setup. Click OK, rerun the simulation. Now we have a smoother set of curves to play with here. And we can zoom in and have a better look. Now to make some measurements, we're going to use our cursors. We're going to begin by adding two cursors by right-clicking on the output waveform, choosing cursor A, and then doing the same thing for cursor B. And you'll see now the two cursors have appeared. Here is A and here is B. Now we can guess where these goes, but there's an easier way to do it. If I select cursor B, you'll notice there's a toolbar that gets highlighted, which allows us to quickly identify key inflection points in the waveform. And you can see here as you move the cursor, the yellow information box will tell you what it is. So if you want to find the exact location for the peak of our waveform, uh, choose the second one. Cursor B now has gone over to the very peak. And if I open up the sim data panel over here, what I will see is the actual information. So for cursor B, we have an X value of 5.035K. 
and a Y value of 999 millivolts. Now I'm gonna change my scale to make it easier to find the, the minus three dB point. I'm gonna change my scale for the output waveform into decibels. So magnitude rather than uh, voltage. I'm gonna turn it into dB. There we go. And then we're gonna resize our curve. So now if I want to determine the actual minus three dB point using the A cursor, all I need to do is to go to the Y value and change that to minus 3.0007. So that is essentially minus 3 dB from the current B location, which is minus 744 microvolts. And so those two combine the minus three plus the 744 is to four degrees of resolution minus 3.0007. So if I just hit enter, I will now have the A cursor at the minus 3 dB point, which is shown here, and its value precisely is 5.035K. And its precise value is 4.8766 kilohertz.